Welcome to teachmeall.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the front brake pads and rotors on this 2002 Ford Ranger Edge. Now this one's a little bit different from our typical brake videos because we're going to be replacing the wheel bearings on this and also the seals. So a little bit different. So now we're going to go over the tools that we used to do this job right. A jack, two jack stands, and two wheel chocks. Two new front brake rotors some new front brake pads and we chose the ceramic pads. Two outer wheel bearings and two inner wheel bearings and two inner wheel bearing seals. Some new cotter pins. Some wheel bearing grease. A bearing packer. Some dot three brake fluid some brake parts cleaner, some anti-seize lubricant, some high temperature caliper grease, some thread lock, some hose pinch pliers, a large C-clamp, a disc brake spreader, a 19 millimeter socket and ratchet for the lug nuts, a 14 millimeter socket and ratchet for the guide pin bolts, a 15 millimeter socket for the caliper bracket bolts, and a 1 and 1 16th socket for the spindle nut a 3 8 boxing wrench for the bleeder screw. Here we have a couple of different standard screwdrivers. Some nail nose pliers. A torque wrench. A rubber mallet. A brake bleeder kit. A bungee cord to top the caliper. Some safety glasses. A shop light. And some shop towels. First we'll set the emergency brake. They're going to put the wheel chocks behind both rear tires. Then we use our screwdriver to remove our center cap. We have aluminum wheels on this vehicle, so be very careful about scarring up the wheel. We're going to use our 19 millimeter socket and ratchet to loosen up the lugs. Then remove to the other side and do the exact same thing. Once all the lugs are loosened, we're going to use our jack to raise the vehicle up off the ground. Here you found a nice jacking point on the cross member in front of the vehicle. With the wheels off the ground, we'll position our jack stands. Once both jack stands are positioned, we'll lower the vehicle onto the jack stands. And we're going to use our socket and ratchet to go ahead and remove the lugs, lug nuts. With all the lug nuts removed, we'll slide the tire off the vehicle. Put our lug nuts in the center cap, slide it under the vehicle for safekeeping and for safety. Move to the other side and do the exact same thing. And we'll slide the tire off the vehicle. And slide up under the truck for safety and for safekeeping. Starting on the passenger side, we're going to turn the wheels toward the driver's side. Here we're going to show you the bolt locations. Two caliper mounting bracket bolts. The caliper guide pin bolts. And the bleeder screw. 
Then we're going to use our hose pinch plier to clamp the brake line. We're going to remove the dust cover off the bleeder screw and attach our 3 8 wrench. Then we're going to attach the bleeder kit. Open up the bleeder screw. Use our large C-clamp to slightly compress the piston inside the caliper. This makes it easier to get the caliper off the brake pads. We open up the bleeder screw and we turn the C-clamp compressing the piston. Now we're going to close the bleeder screw. Remove the C-clamp, remove our disc brake bleeder kit, and remove our wrench and reinstall our dust cover. Now we're going to remove the upper guide pin bolt. Then we're going to remove the lower guide pin bolt. With both bolts removed, we can slide the caliper off the brake pads and we'll tie it up using our bungee cord. This gets the caliper out of the way. Then we're going to remove our brake pads. Then we're going to remove the caliper mounting bracket bolts. Here we start with the lower, lower caliper mounting bracket bolt. Then move to the upper one. With both bolts removed, we're going to slide the caliper mounting bracket out of the way. Now we need to move the dust cover from the center of the rotor. This will give us access to the spindle nut. We're using a small screwdriver and our rubber mallet. Be real careful not to dent this up. As you can see, somebody who's done this before us has beat the cap up pretty good. We probably should have replaced it, but we didn't. And I believe you can get these at your local auto parts store also. Now we're going to remove our cotter key with our needle nose pliers. Then we move this cover over our spindle nut. Then we use our socket to remove the spindle nut. It's good to lay these pieces on a clean rag or something. Then we remove the outer wheel bearing and the and the um, washer. And then we can slide the rotor off the spindle. Using a clean rag, we wipe the old grease off the spindle. Using a little brake parts cleaner here to help clean it up. Now we're going to pack the new well bearings with our wheel bearing grease. Here it shows we have some new races. We don't need those. The new rotor came with came installed with races already. And these are the inner wheel bearings, the larger ones, and the smaller ones are the outer wheel bearings. Again, we'll get rid of the races as we won't, as we won't need those. Again, these are our inner wheel bearings. And they'll go in our new rotors, just like this on the back side. The apron part goes down into the rotor against the race. Here's our outer wheel bearings. They go on top of the spindle into the rotor like this. Now we're going to get our bearing packer ready. Place a good amount of grease inside the bearing packer. Now we put our bearing packer back together. Place our new bearing into the bearing packer. Remember to read the instructions. We're going to press down 
You can, use, you can either use it like this, or you can press it on the white thing directly, but just read the instructions on how to use it. Make sure you're getting plenty of grease coming through the bearing. If you cannot get enough grease coming through, that it comes out both ends, um, add more grease to the bearing packer. Sometimes it requires quite a bit of strength to push the grease through the bearing. Now you can see the grease coming through the seams of the bearing. Now, we have one of the inner wheel bearings packed. We're going to move on to the other ones. We do this for each one of the bearings. Then we're going to apply a little bit of grease to inside our rotors, kind of behind the race. Slide our new bearing in. And now, use our new bearing seal and our rubber mallet to gently tap it into place. Make sure the bearing seal is the edge is um, flush with the outside of the rotor. Now we're going to apply a little bit of grease to the spindle. This helps to get a better seal. Then we're going to slide our new rotor into place. Then we're going to install our outer wheel bearing. We install the washer. And then we install the spindle nut. And be careful not to cross thread this nut. It's very fine threads can be easily cross threaded. Make sure you run it on by hand. Then we're going to torque the spindle nut to about 20 to 25 foot-pounds as we turn the rotor. This is seating the bearing. And check your manufacturer's specifications on the torque settings. Now once you get it torqued, you'll turn off the spindle nut You'll back it off about a half a turn. Now you're going to torque it to 20 inch pounds 
This is about two foot pounds, so it's very, very minimal. If you over torque your spindle nut, you can cause your bearings to seize. Now we slide the cap over the spindle nut. If you notice here, we cannot line up the hole with our cotter key, so we're going to back off the nut just a little bit, just enough to get the spindle, the cotter key inside the spindle. There we go. Now take our nail nose pliers. We'll turn up the ends of the cotter key. This will keep the spindle nut from backing off. Keep it adjusted properly. Now we're going to reinstall our dust cover. And again, we used our rubber mallet here, not to dent up the dust cover. As you can see, whoever did this before us probably used a regular ball pin hammer and beat it up pretty good. But we're just going to use our rubber mallet and gently knock it into place. Now, this rotor installed, we're going to use our brake parts cleaner to remove any grease or oil that may be on the rotor. Do this on the outside and on the inside. Now we're getting ready to mount our caliper mounting bracket, so we're going to place a little thread lock on our caliper mounting bracket bolts. And we're going to grease our caliper guide pins. First we remove the caliper guide pin from the caliper mounting bracket and we wipe off any existing grease and we lubricate them using our anti-seize lubricant. Push it back into place, make sure it snaps all the way down to the boot. Both guide pins properly lubricated. We're going to slide the caliper mounting bracket into place and start both of our caliper mounting bracket bolts. This one's a little bit harder to get to than the bottom one. I'm going to tighten these up. We're going to torque these to 85 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Now we're going to grease the slides where our brake pads attach to the caliper mounting bracket. Inspect the slides make sure they're in good condition. Then we're going to apply a little anti-seize lubricant. Notice the lower indicator clip on the brake pads. We we'll install this on the outside and on the bottom. Slide your brake pad into the caliper mounting bracket. Remember to do this for the inner, inner and the outer. Then we're going to apply some high temperature caliper grease to the back of both brake pads. Smooth it out with our fingers a little bit. Now we're going to get ready to install our caliper. So first we'll apply a little thread lock to our caliper mounting bracket bolts. We remove our caliper from the bungee cord and we're going to compress the piston inside the caliper. So using one of our old brake pads and our disc brake spreader, we're going to remove the dust cover, install our 3 8 wrench in our bleeder kit, open up the bleeder screw and compress the piston using our disc brake spreader. You don't want to alternate from side to side since this has two pistons in the caliper. Try to compress them as evenly as possible.
Okay, once the piston's fully compressed, remove our disc brake spreader, remove our old pad, and we'll tighten up the bleeder screw. Remove our bleeder kit, remove our wrench, and reinstall our dust cover. Now we can slide the caliper into place over our new brake pads. We have to push in the guide pins a little bit. Make sure you turn the guide pins correctly. Then we install our caliper guide pin bolts. We'll tighten them up. And finally, we're going to torque these to 25 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Then we're going to remove our hose clamp pliers and move to the other side. We'll start by turning our brakes, our wheels, toward the passenger side. Reinstall our hose pinch pliers. Move our dust cover. Install our 3H wrench, our bleeder kit, open up the 3H, open up the bleeder screw, use our large C-clamp and compress the piston slightly, tighten up our bleeder screw, remove our bleeder kit, reinstall our dust cover, and now we're going to remove our caliper guide pin bolts, starting with the top. With both bolts removed, we can slide our caliper off the brake pads and tie it up using our bungee cord. This keeps pressure off of the brake line. Then we're going to remove our brake pads. And then we're going to remove our caliper mounting bracket. Here we use a longer handle half inch wrench. These are a little harder to loosen up. With both bolts removed. We'll slide our caliper mounting bracket off and lay it to the side. Then we're going to remove our dust cover using a small screwdriver and our rubber mallet if necessary. Remove our cotter key, our cotter pin. Remove our cover over our spindle nut. Now we'll remove our spindle nut. Here we move the bearings all together. This is our outer with the washer. Then we're going to clean up the spindle using our brake parts cleaner. Then we're going to add a little grease to the inside of our new rotor. Install our inner wheel bearing. Install the seal. Making sure it's flush. Add a little grease to the spindle where it seals with the bearing. Slide the new rotor into place. Slide our outer wheel bearing in. Install our washer. Install our spindle nut. Again here, be very careful about cross-threading it. Make sure you can screw it on by hand. Again, we're going to torque it to 20 to 25 foot-pounds as we're turning the rotor, making sure we seat the bearings properly. Once we're torqued, 
it correctly. We're going to back off the spindle nut a half a turn. We're going to retorque it to two foot pounds. Again, we're going to install our cover and make sure our cutter key lines up. We're going to bend the ends using our needle nose pliers. Then we're going to install our dust cover. And we're going to clean our rotor using our brake parts cleaner. Do this for both sides. We'll add a little thread lock to our copper mounting bracket bolts. Prepare our guide pins by removing the old grease and applying some anti-seize lubricant to the guide pins. Do this for both guide pins. Then we're going to install our caliper mounting bracket. Line it up and insert your caliper mounting bracket bolts. Tighten it up with our 15 millimeter socket and ratchet. We're going to torque these to 85 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Then we're going to inspect the hardware on our caliper mailing bracket, our slides here, and then we're going to apply a little anti-seize lubricant to them. Install our brake pads. Make sure the low brake pad warning clip is in place and installed properly. Now apply a little anti um, high temperature caliper grease to the back of each brake pad. I'm getting ready to install our caliper. We add a little thread lock to our caliper guide pin bolts. Remove our caliper from the bungee cord. Getting ready to compress the piston inside the caliper. So we use one of the old brake pads and our disc brake spreader. Remove our dust cover, install our 3H wrench. Install the brake bleeder kit. Open up the bleeder screw, compress the piston, the pistons, and make sure you compress them evenly, moving it back and forth. Once the pistons are fully compressed, we we'll remove our disc brake spreader, remove our brake pad, tighten up our bleeder screw, remove our brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, and reinstall our dust cover. Now we can slide the caliper into position. Make sure you line up your caliper guide pins. And we insert our caliper guide pin bolts. We'll tighten them down using our 14 millimeter socket and ratchet. Then we're going to torque these to 25 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Then we're going to remove our hose clamp pliers, straighten up our, get ready to bleed the brakes so we open the hood. We'll check our brake fluid level, make sure it's set to the maximum line, adding dot three brake fluid. Reinstall our cap. We'll start with the passenger side since this is farthest away from the master cylinder. Turn the wheels to the driver's side. It gives us good access to the bleeder screw. Move our dust cover. Install our wrench. Install our bleeder kit. 
Have your partner inside the vehicle depress and hold the brake pedal. Open up the bleeder screw and watch for brake fluid coming through the bleeder line. Tighten up the bleeder screw. Have your partner release the brake pedal. Never release the brake pedal with the bleeder screw open as this can introduce air into your brake system. Keep repeating this process of pressing and releasing until there are no more air bubbles in the brake bleeder line. Once you're done, you tighten up the bleeder screw, make sure it's good and tight, remove the wrench, remove the bleeder kit, and install the dust cover. Then we move to the driver's side, turn the wheels toward the passenger side, Again, check your brake fluid. Make sure you have it's at the maximum level. Make sure you reinstall your cap. Remove the dust cover. Install your wrench, your bleeder kit. Have your partner depress the brake pedal. Hold it to the floor, open up the bleeder screw, close the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal, have him press it again, and hold it, open up the bleeder screw, and again watch for bubbles in the line of the bleeder kit. Was there no more air bubbles? You'll tighten up your bleeder screw, release the brake pedal, remove the bleeder kit, remove your wrench, reinstall your dust cover. Then we're going to again add some more brake fluid. Install your brake cap on the master cylinder, straighten up your wheels, and then we're going to reinstall the tires. We install each lug nut by hand. And we'll snug them down the best we can. Move to the other side and do the exact same thing. Once we have the lug nut snug down, we're going to lower the vehicle onto the ground. First, you need to raise the vehicle up and remove the jack stands. Remove our jack stands. Then we're going to lower the vehicle onto the ground. Then we're going to torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Do this in a crisscross pattern. Once all the lugs are torqued, we'll go ahead and install our center cap. Move to the other side, do the exact same thing. Then we're going to remove our two wheel chocks. Well, we hope this video will help you change the front brake pads and rotors on your 2002 Ford Ranger Edge. Send any comments you may have to comments at teachmeall.com. 
And as always, thank you for visiting KitchMeAll.com and have a great day.